Do my characters suck when it comes to performance? Are they better or worse than texture painted characters? Let's find out. I make low poly assets for games. Or do I, really? At first glance, these characters look low poly. But it's more the visual style that's low poly, not the actual polygon count. Technically, low poly aims to make the polygon or vertex count as low as possible. This was especially important when computers, consoles and mobile devices were less powerful. You used as few vertices as possible and you used texture maps to add detail. I create a lot of simple little cartoony characters. I tend to call them low poly, but that's a bit of a white lie since I add details to my characters using extra vertices. If you watched my channel before, you've seen me colorize my characters using a palette texture, and I do this for four reasons. The pace at which I can produce assets is much faster than if I had to UV unwrap and hand paint everything. It takes me at least 10 times longer to create characters if I need to unwrap and paint them. My skill set does not include painting, so my textures would likely look worse. The art style of the polygon colored assets is something I like. The sharpness of assets colored with polygons is unrivaled compared to the texture maps. You can zoom right up to them and they are sharp. But I've had comments on this and I've often wondered what the performance implications of this method are. In this video, you'll find out. If you don't know, I create characters and I use a palette texture in the material. I break up the UV islands and I place them on the palette texture to colorize the model. This combines the modeling, UV unwrapping and painting process into one quick workflow, at the cost of introducing more vertices and triangles to be rendered by the game engine. This is one of the characters that I've made. It has 396 vertices and 776 triangles. If I optimize the vertex count for this character, I can half that number and get it down to 178 vertices and 356 triangles. For this character, I lose the face features, the hair features, the belt and the black trimmings. To get some of the detail back, I need to UV unwrap the model by manually marking the seams and hand painting the textures to reintroduce the eyes, black trimmings and belt. Let's first look at the visual comparison and then the performance comparison. My original model has more geometry detail and it can hold up for extreme close-ups without becoming pixelated. All characters can share a single material which is beneficial for performance and it saves on texture space, on disk and in memory. The texture model has less geometry definition but it allows me to paint more details such as a face, clothing and fabric folds. If you want this look or if you need to add a lot of details to the character this is the way to go. However, it takes about 10 times longer to create and the textures pixelate when you get close. Be aware that the reduced geometry also means that the character will distort when animated. You can get infinitely sharp textures too, but you will need to switch to nearest neighbor filtering and it takes a lot of time to plan and align textures. It may also have side effects, where you get sharp lines for example on the clothes here, but at the cost of the eyes looking pixelated without bilinear filtering. So what about performance? The vertex count showed in 3D modeling software is not the same as the vertex count reported by the game engine. For example, this cube has 8 vertices and 12 triangles in Blender. If I import this cube into Unreal Engine and hover over the asset, it shows 24 vertices and 12 triangles. How can that be? Unity has to do precisely the same. 24 vertices and 12 triangles. It's because this cube uses flat shading, which means each of the six sides of this cube must store four vertices each, because the vertex normal is different for every face on the cube even if it's the same vertex in the 3D modeling software. A game engine vertex can only have one normal, so it must create three copies of the vertex, each with a normal vector pointing in different directions, to be able to render the flat surfaces. If we select all the faces of the cube in Blender and change them to smooth shading and import this cube into Unreal Engine, it now shows it has 14 vertices and 12 triangles. But wait, why 14 vertices and not 8? It's because in addition to each vertex only being capable of holding one normal, the vertex count is also affected by the UV layout. If we look at the default UV mapping of this cube, we can count 14 vertices. So what does this mean for my low poly characters? I use flat shading for most of my palette colored characters because I like the look of it. It would serve no purpose to stitch UV faces together and create larger UV islands because each vertex is copied three times anyway due to the normals pointing in the different directions. 
If you use smooth shading on most faces and if you do texture painting, it would make sense to make the UV islands as connected and large as possible, both for performance and pixel density purposes. So how many vertices do characters generally have these days? Google will lead you to forums where answers range from 1,500 to 150,000 vertices, so it's hard to know. But if we import a metahuman into Unreal Engine, we can look at all the different LOD levels. Without the hair, the meshes that make up the human at the highest LOD zero level has 112,706 vertices. The lowest LOD version, which is the lowest detailed version of this character, has 2,731 vertices. In comparison, my flat shaded martial artist character, which requires triple vertices due to the flat shading, has 2,194 vertices in the game engine. So it's pretty comparable to the lowest detailed version of the metahuman. Let's see how many characters my computer can fit on the screen simultaneously at 60 frames per second in Unreal Engine 5.2 and in Unity 2023.1. Normally you would animate the characters using skinning, but that's a performance topic on its own, so I will test that in a different video. Now I will treat the characters as a static mesh. Let's pretend they are scarecrows instead for now. I created a basic function that adds 1000 meshes at a time. It's difficult to match the render settings between the engines, but some key settings I've confirmed to be enabled in both engines are real-time shadows, global illumination and anti-aliasing. Thankfully, Unreal Engine has only one render pipeline, and I think it would be visually comparable to the High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP, in Unity, so I'll use HDRP in Unity. Let's start with Unity 2023.1. We successfully got 10,000 characters on screen before we dropped below 60 frames per second. In Unreal Engine 5.2, we successfully got 19,000 characters on screen before we dropped below 60 frames per second. If we enable Nanite in Unreal Engine, I could put a whopping 63,000 characters on screen at 60 frames per second. Nanite won't work for animated characters, but for most other environment objects it can be enabled, which gives you a huge performance boost and it saves the need to create multiple level of detail objects, or LODs. Now let's try the model with fewer vertices using smooth shading, optimized UV islands and a horribly painted texture map instead. Will it be faster with fewer vertices, or will the added reading of a larger texture map cancel out the performance increase? In Unity 2023.1, we get 11,000 characters on screen before we drop below 60 frames per second. In Unreal Engine 5.2, we got 20,000 characters on screen before we dropped below 60 frames per second. And with Nanite in Unreal Engine, we get 65,000 characters on screen. So now to the conclusion. The topic of this video was to find out if it's okay to use extra vertices and slice the model and colorize the polygons with a palette texture to get sharp details that can scale to any size, or if it would be a big performance boost to reduce the vertex count and paint textures instead, tenfolding the times it takes me to create assets, but with the benefit of allowing you to paint details. That's if you can actually paint details where I clearly have a long way to go. Reducing the vertices and using textures is only 10% faster in Unity and 5% faster in Unreal Engine. So my conclusion is I will keep using my UV palette colorization technique because it does not impact performance much at all. I will have a much higher rate of creating assets for my games and it gives me the visual style that I like. And a few notes before we call it a day. We did not talk anything about light map UVs in this video. If you use baked light maps instead of real-time lighting in games, you will need to create a separate light map UV channel using the palette texture method. You won't bake lights for characters, but for environment assets it might be useful, so I'll cover that in a separate video. We should also talk about the use of different LOD or level of detail objects if you plan to have many characters on screen at the same time, but also topic for another video. So the bottom line is we can keep using the palette colorization texture for now without having to worry too much about the performance impact in our games. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.